welcome back to another review for Grease Rise of the Pink Ladies. This is for the fourth episode, which I believe is titled, If You Can't Be an Athlete, Be an Athletic Supporter. So, this time around, there's just so much that goes on in this episode that I feel like I can't give the best synopsis myself just from memory alone. So I pulled up a long-ass synopsis on here. I'm not going to read it verbatim, but I'm going to have it up so I can reference it to make sure I don't miss any important plot points or anything, because I feel like this one, there is no chance of me hitting all of the points needed without having some kind of a reference here. So, uh, the episode starts in Jane's bedroom. They're having a sleepover with all the pink ladies and everything. And they're worrying about what's going to happen on Monday because there's already a newspaper article blaming them for Buddy breaking his arm in the last episode. Even though it's definitely not their fault, but they're the scapegoats for literally everything now. So, uh, let's see here. Who says it? Cynthia points out that the newspaper's run by Mr. Daniels and that he and Olivia have history. So, yeah, this is where Jane finally gets nosy enough to ask the question of what really did go on there, which is fair. Like, everyone just kind of knows, but at the same time, no one wants to bring it up. No one wants to be the one to ask. So somebody finally asked. So she shares, but um, I feel like the version that is shared in the episode, it insinuates without spelling it out, but we all know exactly what went on there. So the other girls decide after she tells her story that he is a fink, which is putting it lightly, and then they decide that, um, oh, what was the quote? <laughs> that he should drop dead on fire in a ditch covered with maggots. So, you know, just really went zero to a hundred real freaking quick there, but... Yeah, basically, that's the sentiment, <laughs> all right. So, anyway, new school week starts. They go to school, um, and it starts off in the school hallway with Hazel talking to Buddy, since this is, like, throwing back to the last episode where the two of them were talking after he'd injured himself, uh, just connecting. So, she's talking to him now, not that it really makes much of a difference for how everyone else is treating her. Never mind that she's talking to the cool football player. No, no, she's still one of the only black kids in this almost entirely white school. Therefore, pretty much no matter what she does, they're gonna look at her funny. Which is totally fucked, but it is the 1950s. What do we expect? So, um... Da -da 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 -da. Where is it? So, much as she's being snubbed in the hallways, the pink ladies are also being snubbed by freaking everyone in the hallways. Since, again, they're getting blamed for Buddy's injury. Now, Buddy's girlfriend, ex-girlfriend, what have you, doesn't mention the name, Susan. She's, like, making a big show out of fawning all over him and everything, and he's telling her to knock it off. He doesn't want pity votes, and she's like, but pity votes are still votes. It doesn't matter how you get the votes as long as you get the votes, basically, and it's just sickening and really annoying and puts an even worse taste in your mouth for this character than you already had going in. It's like that. So... Jane thinks this is the perfect time to want to remind everybody why to not vote for Buddy, but, um, which one is it? Which kid? Olivia. Olivia's the Puerto Rican. I had the names mixed up last episode. Nancy is the Asian girl I couldn't remember the name of. That's why I couldn't remember the name. I had the wrong name with the wrong girl. Olivia is the Puerto Rican. You'd think I'd have an easy time remembering these four girls' names, since they are all Beetle Girl names. And yet I still mix them up. I'm trying. I'm trying, guys. But anyway, so Olivia tells her, basically stand down. Don't do anything. Everything we've tried lately has only made shit worse, basically. Don't do anything. And like clockwork. Even with them doing nothing. 
over the frickin' PA system comes the principal, now outlawing gang attire. All jackets must be turned in. You can wear them at the end of the school day, but not in school. Oh, joy. So, yeah, now this is all being blamed on them, too. Joy. So now, on top of that, the principal also tracks down Nancy and says she has a special job for her because so far she has been pretty lucky in not really having to enact any of the punishments the way that the other three have. Yeah, she decides you should be the new school mascot, the one to dress up as a horse. However, no one can know it's you. And Nancy works out a deal with her of, okay, I'll do it if you give funding for, um, oh, where is it? New costumes for the school play. So they make a deal. All is well. She's not thrilled with it. She, trust me, doesn't want anyone to know it's her anyway. So keeping her identity a secret is not a freaking problem. So, more bad news. Drama Club finds out they can't put on the original show they were going to, they instead get to put on yet another very tired retelling of Romeo and Juliet. Everyone is over it, even in the 50s, everyone was over it. Yeah. So Cynthia wants to try out for Mercutio, and Lydia, the main girl, the mean girl of the thespians, decides to tell her that Oh, no, 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 all the roles, they already know who they're casting is everybody. Don't even waste your time. It, it's just a formality that we do auditions. So Cynthia thinks that's stupid, and she tries to drum up interest for basically everybody. Go audition. Let's shake this thing up. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see here. And then, oh, I forgot about this part. See, this is why it's good that I have this to reference. So Olivia is going to give a report in class, and then she gets sent to the principal's office for what she is wearing. She is not even wearing anything bad. It has, like, the teeniest, tiniest little bit of cleavage showing, and that's it. Just because of the shape of her body and her reputation, her teacher decides that she is a distraction to the boys. Never mind that the boys are the ones who are being distracted by her. They are the ones who can't keep their own shit together. No, no. She is the problem simply for existing. A problem we still have today. Yes, I'm heated about this. And she points out that there's another girl in the class wearing literally the same thing she is. And of course, she, the other girl looks like horrified that she just got called out like that teacher looks at the other girls like, yeah, but she wears it different than you. Read as, yeah, she doesn't fill it out like you, is basically the unspoken message here, which is so fucked up and so sexist, but I'm not surprised they went there, and I'm kind of glad they did, because yeah, frankly, dress codes are fucked. I hate them. Always have. Always will. So does everyone. But anyway, so she gets sent to the principal for this. So there's like a whole song and dance number about this, which honestly I loved. So now, after that, she bursts into the school's newspaper office demanding that they print a retraction on the last article. Mr. Daniels refused, claiming the article was well, well written and well researched, and everyone stunned when she asked to allow, be allowed to write a response. And Mr. Daniels explains that Olivia is an excellent writer. So he's going to allow her to, at least at this juncture. That will be important later. Let's see here. They need the help. Newspaper club members jump at the chance to add Olivia to the group. It's obvious Mr. Daniels did not anticipate the reaction. So this piece does get published. And it's a hit, which he also was not anticipating. So she's all smug as shit, and Jane praises her for reminding their classmates why they wanted to vote for a pink lady in the first place. So, because of this, clearly the principal, who is just a busybody and really wants to ruin everyone's damn day, decides to just punish them further, 
and make sure that everyone hates them because she just hates these four girls. She literally has it out for them. God forbid any of them do anything to better anything in this school. Yeah, no, she now decides she is going to enact a strict dress code for both genders, to be fair. But basically, everybody's going to be dressed like squares now. And it is entirely the fault of the pink ladies as far as anyone is concerned. So, if everyone didn't hate them enough before, now they have that hanging on their heads too. Yeah. Yeah. Can you freaking imagine? I swear, dude. Yeah. Anyway... At this point, Jane's not sure they can fight back because, look who was right, everything they do makes everything worse. So, at this point, she's so defeated that she decides, let's go cut class. So she cuts class with Richie. She wants Richie to teach her how to be bad, basically. Although, within literally minutes of them being off campus, she is already, like, basically having an anxiety attack over this. And he's like... Was this a mistake? Do you just want to go back? Because if you want to go back, you can go back. And she's like, no, 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 I want you to teach me to be bad. There's like a whole song and dance number here too. They end up making out in the park or wherever it is they went. It's a whole thing. Uh, da, 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 da. Principal goes after Mr. Daniels for the article that Olivia wrote. Mostly because, you know, everyone liked it. But yeah, so when Olivia offers to write another rebuttal... Mr. Daniels turns her down. She reminds him it's censorship, and he suggests that she keep in mind that as a teenager, she has no rights or power. Yeah, that I don't think sat well with anyone watching. I don't think. So now she can write an article on the football team's prospects of beating the Titans. She has no interest in writing about sports, but if she wants to keep her spot in the club, she's going to be forced to. So, that's a whole last thing. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so back with the whole audition thing. So Cynthia's still drumming up people's interest in auditioning. She reaches Hazel and convinces her to try out, even though Hazel turns her down. It's not until she wins Buddy over to try out that Oh, if Buddy's trying out, now I'll try out. <laughs> so Buddy's going to try out for the role of Romeo. And because of that, it's just assumed that she should try out as Juliet. And that is not what she wants. She just wants a little bit part. She's shy. She doesn't want all the attention on her. So when it comes time to do the audition, you know, it's one of those things where I fully expected it to go all girl boss and everything. And, oh, look at her crush it, because the token black girl, everything, like, clearly they're going to make her crush this. But no, they did not do that. They had her freeze up with stage fright and run off and just bail on the whole thing. And there was no redemption for that. That was just it. Honestly, I'm kind of shook that they took that approach? I wasn't expecting it at all. Given the way how, like, most woke media is these days, really, really did not see that coming. I was like, oh. Oh. Okay. Plot twist. Alright, let's see where this, this is going. <laughs> um, let's see here. Have, like paragraphs about the audition thing. So later when the audition results are posted, uh, Cynthia got cast as Juliet and she thinks this is some kind of a sick joke because remember she wanted to be Mercutio and Lydia is just like pissed because she thought she had it in the bag because of course she thought she did. So the fact that Cynthia, a tomboy, got the role she is just, like, spitting nails. She is so mad and everything. And the teacher is just all too delighted to have a tomboy Juliet and a maimed Romeo. Yeah, that is literally the quote in the show. That is not my paraphrasing. That is the quote from the damn show. What the hell? What the hell? 
Oh, God. Anyway. So, somewhere around here, Olivia decides she is going to change her assignment herself, and she fakes Mr. Daniel's signature on it to try to get it published behind his back, thinking that, ah, eh, he doesn't have to sign off on it. I'll make it look like he signed off on it, and by the time he realizes what I did, he'll be too late. Yeah, except that this backfires, though. But anyway, let's see here. So after Jane and Richie had their whole cutting class day, they go to the Frosty Palace, um, and she's talking about her big plans just, like, for life, her hopes, her dreams, and she's trying to fish to Richie for what his are. And he talks about, like, wanting to travel the world, but he doesn't really have, like, ambitions. Not like her. And this seems to upset her, because, like, she has been raised a very certain way that, like, she cannot even wrap her head around the possibility of somebody just not having those kinds of goals and those kinds of ambitions for what are they going to do with your life? What do you mean you don't know? Like, you can't just not know. We're in high school. We need to know. Like, how can you not know? Yeah, she's very waspy, just saying. But, um, yeah, it's like their first minor, not really fight, but like disagreement, I guess. But anyway, yeah, so he is very not serious about his future, and that makes her very uncomfy. Uh, let's see. So, time for the big game arrives. She's, uh, the principal's still not letting anyone wear jackets. She's got, like, a trash can for the jackets to go in where people can retrieve them after. Blah, 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 blah. Nancy gets out there in her mascot. Initially, the crowd cheers, and she's thinking, oh, actually, this isn't even a punishment. I'm loving the attention. Yeah, until the team starts doing badly, and now they're, like, throwing food at her. Like, it went from 0 to 100 real quick with that. So Wally, who is now filling in for Buddy's position, is not doing so well, and he is taking it real hard. So she, even though she is not supposed to make her identity known, talks to him through the mascot costume, basically gives him a pep talk. All is well. He ends up helping them almost win the game. They don't quite win the game, but they get a hell of a lot closer than anyone expected them to. And it's around this point that Olivia finds out that Mr. Daniels found out what she did and threw out all of the papers. So, um, yeah, all of everyone else's hard work went to waste, and now they're blaming her for what she did, because clearly none of the pink ladies can ever do anything right. Yeah, now, just to rub salt in the wound, Mr. Daniels comes by with his fiance, just to rub it in that, hey, I'm a taken man, basically. The fiance is oblivious to who this girl is, and she's just like, oh, I always love meeting his students. It's just like, oh, you have no idea. You have no idea. Yeah, so anyway, let's see here. So, because the newspapers were thrown out and she couldn't get her message out one way, that doesn't mean it's the only way to get her message out. So they kind of co-opt the cheerleaders, like, what is it, the megaphone? Not megaphone, but, um, uh, maybe it's megaphone, the cone thing. I was in cheerleading for a year, and I still don't know the terminology. I suck, but anyway, so, <laughs> um, they, they take that. And they basically yell out the message to the entire student body about how all of this is being done just to, like, create division amongst us. Do not let the man distract you. They are doing this on purpose. We should all be working together to change the system for better, not fighting each other and making everything worse. And there's, like, a whole speech that's, like, very inspirational and it's a whole thing. They're going to kind of overthrow the system. They all demand their jackets back. It's a whole thing. <laughs> so, only when they work together can they fight the powers of that. Wait, 
despite powers that be who want to control them. Let's see here. So everyone uh, gathers at the Frosty Palace after to celebrate, and Hazel tells Buddy she's decided to help out with the play by doing props. Even though she won't be in the play, she'll do props. But at this point, he admits he changed his mind and dropped out, so she's literally doing it for nothing. Cool. But she does offer to help him run lines and everything. So with that in mind, he decides maybe he will stay on as Romeo if she'll help him. And it's a whole thing where, um, what's her face? Where is it? Does it mention it? The other girl, the one, the girlfriend, ex-girlfriend, whatever she is. She keeps trying to demand his attention to come over there. And he's blatantly ignoring her and keeping his focus on Hazel. So, who knows? Maybe those two are going to have some chemistry. Don't know. But, yeah, basically it seems like there's something budding between these two. Let's see here. The pink ladies and the T-birds meet up outside the malt shop, and Jane and Richie apologize to each other, and he likes that she's committed to accomplishing goals, and she likes that he's able to relax and enjoy life. Opposites trapped, basically. And the pink ladies are greeted with cheers and applause when they enter the malt shop. Even the cheerleaders and football players clap, and Olivia jokes that she's starting to like school as the episode ends. So... It's a lot. It's a lot. And that is as condensed as one can even make this episode. Like I said, there was no way for me to just do that one all from memory. Because there's just so much going on at breakneck speed. The pacing of it is insane. That's actually one of my complaints with it. Is that it's just so all over the place in so many different directions at once. That it's really hard to follow even. And be like, what did I even just watch? But on the other hand, that said... I'm glad I did not bail on this series when, for as much as I was saying the last two episodes were going downhill, I feel like this one's redeeming it. This one was better. This one held my attention. This one felt better written. Again, pacing issues aside, but in general, it's starting to feel like, okay, maybe this show does have potential. Maybe it is going somewhere interesting. I'm kind of intrigued again, like I was with the first episode. See, all right, where are they going to take this? Because there's a few ways I can think in my head where they could be taking it. Are any of them correct? I don't friggin' know, but I mean, they might be. Um, but regardless, I'm really intrigued to see where it does go. I'm starting to get more attached to these characters. I'm like, okay, I'm starting to forgive some of the faults of the show a little more easily and just accept it for what it is. Granted, the music still does not feel correct for the time period this is supposed to be in, and that keeps, like, throwing me out of, like, the suspension of disbelief. It does keep breaking that wall for me. If it weren't for that, it would be a lot easier to digest a lot of it, but I get why they have to do it for, like, modern audiences and their target demographic. I get it, but... I don't know. It's just a minor nitpick that, for me, is a bigger deal than it probably is for other people. But this episode was actually pretty solid. I liked this one. Again, I'm not rating the show till I watch the full season. Then I'll rate it as a season. But just in general, just know that I did like this one. I liked this one a hell of a lot more than probably the last two episodes combined. Still not as much as maybe the first episode, but... Uh, getting closer to that, to where now I'm hopeful that maybe we're on an upward trajectory. Maybe they were just really having a hard time trying to hit their stride, trying to, like, lay out the groundwork for everything that is coming. Because, again, there's so much going on that, yeah, it does have to cover a lot of ground relatively quickly. So that's hard to do. But once you have the groundwork laid it does get easier, and that's true of a lot of shows. So that is not necessarily the easiest thing on Earth to accomplish. I applaud them for their efforts, because I think now that they've done that, I, I think it is, hopefully anyway, gonna improve. But we'll see. We'll see. But I like the entire tone of this one better. I, I just like how they did a lot of things way better than the last two episodes. I should check to see, did this one have a different screenwriter by any chance than the last two? Because maybe that made a difference too. I'm not sure, but anyway. 
So yeah, I, I did enjoy this one quite a bit. <laughs> so, anywho, that's it for this one, guys. So as usual, you know what to do. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a like. If you're not already and you'd like to be, click subscribe, hit that notification bell icon so you never miss an upload. Leave comments down below. Make sure you're following my social media accounts, my Facebook fan page, my Twitter, my Instagram, my eBay, my Reddits, everything and more. It's all down below. And if you like what I do here on this channel and you'd like to help support it, the donation link, as always, is down in the description. Anyway, guys, till next time, see ya.